everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show. We've got a really sweet little spring treat for you today. We are going to make this adorable, colorful little gift bag using the Granny Shell Stitch. If you've ever made a granny square, you're going to fly through this pattern because the first two rows actually start out exactly the same way as a classic granny square, but then we tweak that pattern a little bit and we get a circle rather than a square. It's also a great scrap project. I used less than 15 yards per color for this little guy and it's the shell stitch. So you're just going to fly through it really, really fast, really, really simple repetition and a little bit of ribbon and you're all done. This little bag is perfect for larger treats like Easter eggs or little chocolate bunnies or maybe small stuffed toys, but I'm sure you'll find a dozen purposes for it. Anyway, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a splendid spring shell stitch sack together. In order to make our granny square bag, you really only need between 10 and 15 yards per color. I grabbed some of the brightest, most cheerful colors I could find from my stash, but since this is a scrap project, you really don't need much of each color. I'm using five colors. They're all a size for medium weight acrylic yarn. You're gonna want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and you can really use any hook you want. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter. It's also known as a seven but you could also use a G or a six. You could use a five millimeter, which is an H or an eight, anything around there that you're comfortable working with a size four medium weight yarn with. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. I'm going to start with pink for the bottom of my bag. Now, if you're not comfortable using a cinch circle, you can chain five and make a ring. But I like cinch circles because they make a nice, tiny, tight little center. We're going to chain three to begin. So once you have your circle, whether you're using a cinch circle or the chain five ring, chain three to begin. That counts as a double crochet. Two more double crochets into the circle. We're going to chain one and we're going to work three more double crochet all into that circle. If you're working a cinch circle like me, make sure you're working all of your double crochets over top of that little tail so that you can cinch up that circle when you're done. Chain one, three more double crochet into the center. Chain one, I'm gonna make my hole a little smaller now. Three more double crochets all into that ring. So that's one, two, three, four sets of three double crochet or 12 double crochets because we're gonna count that chain three as a double crochet. Chain one, you can cinch up your little circle, find the top of that chain three and join with a slip stitch. And that is the bottom of our little bag, ready to go. Now you can take a moment and weave in that tail or you can leave it out and weave it in later. We're going to slip stitch across the next two stitches and into that little chain one space, I like to start rows when I'm using the shell stitch in a little corner space. I just find it makes it easier to keep track of where I am. Chain three to begin. That counts as a double crochet. We're going to work two more double crochet into that little chain one space. Chain one, and before we leave, three more double crochet into that little space. And chain one. In between all of our shells, we're going to be chaining one. We're not creating any corners because we want a circular bag bottom. So into the next three little chain one spaces from the first row, you're going to work three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. So three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, 
three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. And it will be slightly square, but uh, not by the time we're done the bottom of our bag. Anyway, you can finish off those last two little chain one spaces by yourself, and I'll catch up with you in a moment. At the end of row two, you'll have eight sets of three double crochet or eight shells, and they'll all be separated by a single chain one. Don't forget to chain one at the end of your last three double crochet. We're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three that began the row, and then we're going to slip stitch across those next two double crochet stitches and right into the chain one space. Now we want this to be circular, not square, so we're gonna actually change up where we work the three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, because we do wanna move from eight to 12 shells at the end of row three, but we don't want it to look square, we want it to look circular, so here we go. We're gonna chain three to begin, and into this same space we're gonna work two more double crochet, so that's shell number one, and we're going to chain one. Into the next space, which is traditionally the side of a square, we're going to work three double crochet, chain one, two times. So three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. And that is going to create a little bit of a corner where there was a little bit of a side to begin with into the next space, which is to typically a corner, <laughs> we're going to work three double crochet, chain one, and we're only gonna do that once. So we're changing up where we work our little double set. So into the next space, we're gonna repeat three double crochet, chain one, twice. All right, while the rest of you kind of catch up with the crochet, I'm just gonna recap quickly what we're doing for row three. So we slip stitched into that chain one space to start, chained three, that counts as a double crochet, and we finished off that first shell with two double crochet, and then chain one. Into the next space, we worked three double crochet, chain one, twice. So that changes where that little corner bump goes, which is gonna help round out the bottom of our bag. Then. Into the next space, we chained, or I should say, we only chained one to leave, and we worked three double crochet, chain one, into the next space. Then, into the next space, we repeated this little thing. Three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. And that's the little trick for row three. You work, you start with three double crochet, but you don't double it up. Instead, you double it up in the next space. And that is just going to change where that little corner bump that usually happens when we're making a granny square. It changes it so that we end up with more of a granny circle. So you guys can go ahead and repeat that very simple little repeating pattern. You'll have 12 shells or 12 sets of three double crochet, all separated by a chain one all the way around. So wherever you see that double set of shells from the previous row, you only work one shell into it for row three. And I'll hook up with you in a moment. All right, that's the end of row three. You'll have 12 sets of three double crochet or 12 shells. They're all going to be separated by a chain one. So little chain one spaces in between. Don't forget to chain your last one after your last set of three and slip stitch to join in the top of the chain three that began the row. So now we have something that's a little more circular, a little less square, and that forms the base of our granny shell bag. From here on out, we're just gonna be worrying about each little space, so I'm slip stitching across to the next space, and this becomes row four, but it's also the first row of the side of our bag. So we're not increasing our shell count anymore, we're gonna be working a shell chain one into every single space all the way around. So we'll still have 12 shells at the end of row four and every row going onwards. You're not doubling up your shells anymore. We're just working one shell chain one into each space. And here's where we go. Chain three to begin counts as a double crochet. Finish off that shell with two more double crochets. 
and chain one. Don't forget to chain one. Whenever you finish a shell, you always chain one before you move to the next space. Next space, three double crochet, chain one. Next space, three double crochet, chain one. Next space, three double crochet, chain one. And I'm pretty sure you've got it. Three double crochet, chain one into each of those spaces all the way around. You'll still have 12 shells at the end of row four, and I'll hook back up with you at the beginning. At the end of row four, you'll still have 12 little shells and 12 chain one spaces in between, and you're gonna see it starting to curl up. Because I like this side of my double crochet to be the front, I'm going to just turn it so that it wants to roll the other way. Chain one after you finish your last set of three double crochet, join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three that began the row. If you're only gonna use one color throughout, or if you wanna use fewer colors or more colors, I'm gonna change color right now. Um, so I'm gonna thin it, fasten off here, but if you wanted to continue with the same color, you would just slip stitch across to the next chain one space and continue. So if you're changing color, this is how that looks. Snip your yarn, fasten off, take a moment to weave in the tail or just tuck it to the inside and you can weave it in later. I find sometimes taking a moment to weave in the tails or just weave them in enough to get them out of the way is helpful, but you can flip the bag inside out and weave all those tails in at a later time. So not a big deal. All right, grab the next color we're going to start with a slip knot. And you can join in any of those chain one spaces that you like, but I'm gonna sort of join my yarn in the space just where I fastened off. So it's the space just before where I fastened off. And if you're continuing the same color, you'll be over here, but it doesn't matter because from here on out, it all looks the same. Join with a slip stitch and here we go. Every row from here on out begins with a chain three. That counts as a double crochet. Work two more double crochet into that space. That completes the shell. And chain one before you leave. And it's just three double crochet, chain one, into each space all the way around. So you still have 12 shells and 12 chain one spaces all the way around for row five. And now that we're changing color, you can really see that cute little shell pattern, a little more defined. Always remember that chain one at the end of your last set of three double crochets, so you can join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that began the row. If you're continuing with your color, I'm going to make two rows of each color going forward. Remember to slip stitch across those other two double crochets and into the next chain one space. This is just a good place to start a shell as opposed to trying to reach backwards or flip it. You could always flip it if you wanted to revert, work in reverse. We don't have any corners to worry about, so you don't have to think about starting in a corner or anything like that. Just starting in the chain one space. Chain three to begin. Finish off that first shell with two more double crochet. Don't forget to chain one and work Shell, chain one, into every single chain one space all the way around. I'm just finishing off row six. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch and I'm gonna be changing color. So I'm gonna fasten off and I'm gonna to switch to yellow now. You can repeat this pattern so you can continue using the same color. Just remember you wanna slip stitch across those next two stitches and into the next chain one space. That also keeps all of our double crochets facing the same way out. I like the way that looks. Or you can change colors like me. Worry about weaving in your tails later. I'm just gonna get this sort of started and out of the way. So weave them in quickly on the back of some of those stitches. I'm gonna come back and weave in the tails at the end of the project. So it's out of my way for now. Join your next color. So I'm gonna to switch to yellow. This is such a sunny, happy color. Start with a slip knot. 
You can join in any chain one space you want. I am going to join in the space just before where I fastened off my last color. Every row begins with a chain three because it counts as a double crochet. Remember to finish off your shell with two more double crochet and chain one before you leave. So it's still shell chain one in every single space all the way around. You always join with a slip stitch to finish off the row and you want to add six more rows. So this is going to be row number seven and then on top of row seven, five more rows. So six more rows in total and that will be all of the rows necessary in this little bag. Of course, you can add a few more if you want. It is a good little scrap buster pattern. And of course, if you're changing colors and you want to put a lot of colors in or you just want a taller little bag, then feel free to add more rows. Either way, I will see you at the end of my second blue row. <laughs> I'm just finishing row 12 of my little granny shell bag. So that's 12 rows. Each row has, well, from the fifth row up, <laughs> each of those rows has 12 shells and 12 chain one spaces in it. So I used five colors. And of course I used the first color for the first four rows and then two rows per color after that. So that's 12 rows in total. And now we're just gonna finish things off with a little baby shell stitch. I love using this little tiny shell stitch to edge the top of bags. I think it makes it look so cute. So after we've joined row 12, we're just going to slip stitch into the next stitch and we're going to start right there in the middle of our shell. Chain two. We're going to skip the chain two when we get back around to the beginning. So the chain two isn't going to count as a half double crochet, but we're going to chain two just to get up to that height. We're going to work three half double crochet into the same stitch that we just slip stitched into. So three half double crochet into the top of that middle stitch of your shell. Now remember, we're gonna skip that chain two when we get around to it. So that's it. Into the chain one space, you're going to slip stitch. So nice and small. Find the middle of the next shell and into the top of that stitch work three half double crochet. So that looks <clears throat> a little better. There's your three half double crochet. Skip to the chain one space and slip stitch. So what you're doing is you're creating just the smallest little shell scallop across the tops of your granny shell. Find the middle of the shell. Three half double crochet into that stitch. Three half double crochet skip to the chain one space and slip stitch. Try not to be too tight. You don't want to unintentionally bog down your stitches. You just want the ever so slight little shell scallop running around the top of your little bag. So three double, or should say three half double crochet into the middle stitch of each shell all the way around. Slip stitch into the chain one spaces. Don't be too tight. And you'll have 12 little scallops across the top of all 12 of your granny shells. Don't forget to slip stitch into the chain one space in between. Once you complete your last scallop, so three half double crochet in the top of that middle stitch of the last shell, you're going to slip stitch into the chain one space so that completes your last little scallop. And then, like I said earlier, we're gonna skip the chain two that we began with and we're gonna slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet we made. Nice and tight. And that will pull that shell down just to complete that pattern all the way around. You can fasten off. And now you can take a moment to flip your bag inside out and weave in all of those little tails. So I just flip it right inside out and then I grab my yarn needle and I'm just going to take a moment to make sure I get every single one of those little tails and just weave them back and forth through the same colored stitches. So you want to make sure you're weaving it through the same colored stitches back and forth a couple times. I might go around the center here. Back and forth a couple times just to make sure that they're in there nice and snug and they don't want to come back out. 
Adding a drawstring to our little bag is really easy. So once you've woven in your tails, flip it back right side out. And you can either use some ribbon. I've got some ribbon here. You only want around eh, 24 inches or 60 centimeters worth. That might even be a little too much. All you want to do is make sure it kind of wraps around the top of your bag twice. Or you can crochet one. So you can use any color you want. Same hook. Start with a slip knot, chain 72, and fasten off. You can trim the little edges of your tail so they're nice and short and they match each other. And that makes a really simple drawstring as well. We've made several drawstrings here on the show. So you've got lots of different ideas to choose from. Grab any little side of your bag that you like. So whichever bag side you think looks the nicest. This is pretty even all the way around, so it doesn't really matter. And you just start weaving your drawstring in and out. through those little spaces and the top of your last row. I'm using a ribbon that's about a centimeter wide, so not too, not too big, and it fills up that space really nicely. A chained drawstring is also really nice because it'll be about the same size as well in terms of thickness. Grab your two ends, make sure that they're relatively the same length, that looks so cute. Woven in and out through all of those little spaces. And then you can just <laughs> cinch it shut with goodies inside. There we go. Tie it up with a nice little bow. I feel like bow tying is an art even in and of itself. Something I could probably do a little bit of improvement with. <laughs> And that is your little drawstring bag using the classic granny shell stitch. Oh, I just love rainbow colors. They're so pretty. They're so cheerful. <laughs> this little bag wound up being about five and a half inches tall top to bottom and about five inches across in diameter. So just the perfect little size for those nice little spring gifts. And it's fast and it scraps so I think you could probably whip up a whole bunch of these you know simple little weekend you know put your feet up relax it's the shell stitch so you barely even have to look at what you're doing you just feel for the next space work a shell and keep going anyway we hope you enjoyed making this adorable little sack along with us this week and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show until then stay safe stay crafty and have a great week bye guys hi everybody Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.